What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel for another episode of On The Shelf, a show where I like to experiment with different posing and display options with my collection in the hopes of giving you some ideas for your own displays. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around because today I'm bringing to you my Hot Toys Mandalorian collection. But before we get started, do us a favor, would you? Hit that like button, notification bell, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get to it. Okay guys, this is my current setup for my Star Wars Mandalorian collection. This is a little different from how I normally do these on the shelf episodes as I generally make use of the modular cases I have to display my collection. However, for this display, as I have a quarter scale Mando as well, I decided to do something different so I could play around and blend them all together to create my own Mandalorian shrine. I do have some bigger modular cases on the way and eventually I might move this into one of them, but for now I'm really enjoying this setup. It allows me the space to play with the height and width being an open shelf. I've been a Mandalorian fan from day one. I still remember when The Mandalorian first got advertised on Disney+. Plus. I decided to check it out when I saw Jon Favreau's name attached, and the rest is history. Mando brought me back to Star Wars, and the amazing journey he and Grogu went on over the first two seasons is some of my favourite TV. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at why each piece is here in my collection. Kicking off the shelf with Quill and Grogu accompanying Durastil Mando and the Blurg. This whole section plays together with Quill taking a seat, spouting some wisdom to Grogu I imagine, whilst he holds the feed for the Blurg. Quill is a great character and an important person in Mando and Grogu's journey, especially Mando. He always shot straight with him and ended up becoming a friend and mentor in some ways for Din. The figure itself is fantastic quality and the sculpt is on point, plus the movable bottom half of the mouth is a nice touch. The fact that he was a crucial person for Din in his story became the reason why he was essential to add to my collection. Moving to the Blurg, the beast of a thing it is. This is the first creature I've purchased for the collection, and the reasons for that are, I love the moments Din and Quill had with the Blurgs, not to mention it has great presence and definitely enhances the display for me. It's so Star Wars. And now, for Durastil Mando himself, sitting atop the beast, rifle over his shoulder, looking out over the landscape whilst Quill and Grogu take a break to refuel. This is my second Durastil Mando which came in the two pack with the Blurg. This look for Mando is awesome and a must have. The first couple of episodes he has this look are favourites for me and really give off that western cowboy vibe. Then by having him posed with Quill, the Blurg and Grogu it really caps off my homage to the beginning of the Mandalorian. Now, let's take a look at the first Star Wars figure I purchased, which is my other Durastil Mando. For this pose, I'm going for my own version of Mando walking through the desert with Grogu trailing behind in the hover pram. This is a reminder of some of the iconic artwork and posters from Season 1, and is meant to invoke the memories of them on their travels and adventure, which for me is one of my favourite themes and structures of the show. For this version of Durastil Mando, I have also removed the parts of the fat suit for better articulation. Shout out to Posing with Peter for his video guide on how to do that. I could not have done it without that tutorial. Thank you, brother. Moving on to the original Beskar Mandalorian release. I have him in a dynamic pose, using his jetpack and flamethrower, shooting down at enemies whilst holding and shielding Grogu. I have him using the original base with the spikes that come with the Durastil Mando as I feel that works better in filling out the space in the display here. Now, as he doesn't have a wired cape, what I've done is use two different wires which I have stuck down his back armour plate to then rest the cape on and create the illusion that it's blowing in the wind, adding to the dynamic look of the scene. I love how versatile Mando is at fighting and how many tools he has to make use of. Finding a way to showcase the jetpack and flamethrower in use was a definite focus in building out this display and this older version is a perfect catalyst for it. And now, the big guy, the quarter scale. Center stage with the base propped up on some clear risers to give him some more height to allow for separation from the figures in front below. 
I love this scale guys. I've always struggled trying to capture the beauty of quarter scale on camera because in hand, I personally love the presents in the collection room. My eyes always go to them and for me, I get statue type presents but with the ability to pose and create display options myself, which is one of my main joys when it comes to collecting. I would like to eventually get this guy repainted with chrome. I've seen some people do it and whilst it's not a priority, it's definitely something I'd consider doing to enhance this already fantastic piece. Then we have the quarter scale Grogu in the pram. He is awesome in this scale. Posable, swap out pieces with the material outfit. What more could you ask for? He's not just an accessory. Moving over to Bo-Katan. I have her hovering in the back here behind Boba. Pistols out, relaxed, but ready, almost like she's a bodyguard looking over Boba on the throne. For some reason, I always had this pose in mind for her even before making this display. She's a stunning figure visually and I like her being aerial, so when it came to structuring this side of the display, it made sense to have her up high. One, because it allows me to display three characters together fairly tight, whilst still allowing you to view each figure without much obstruction from the other. That's important to me. I love to see levels in the display and I love to be able to see the figures properly. And two, using Boba's throne to have in front, it obscures Bo's base and stand, assisting with the illusion that she's actually hovering in the back. Next up, we have Ahsoka, standing in the very front corner of the shelf, holding her lantern in the darkness of the forest, looking out as if pondering where to go next. When I think of this pose and how I have her displayed, not facing us front on, but instead facing a completely different direction to everyone else in the display, it brings me back to how I felt about her appearance in Mando Season 2, from which this figure was inspired. That episode was so amazing, what an introduction in live action for her character in the Mandoverse. The overall feeling I got from Ahsoka in that episode was that she was on a quest, she was hunting, searching for answers and something about having her simply just standing here, looking out, instead of being in an action pose for me is just as powerful and reminding me of her character arc and vibe from the show. Moving over to Big Bad Boba on his throne. Feet up, like a boss, cashed up with Beskar. I gotta give a shout out to Boston Collectors for the idea for this pose. He hit a pose with Boba with his feet up on the Cantona in his review of Boba on the throne. And I love that idea, so cheers for that, mate. I had to give it a go. I really like the presence of this piece as a whole. Boba has great articulation, a fantastic head sculpt, and the idea of Boba as a Damio I think is pretty cool. For me and Mando, he was a force to be reckoned with, and then with the end credit of him claiming the throne, setting up his own show, I was excited. Now whilst his show had its clear flaws for me in certain episodes, there were still some moments in there where Boba got to shine. I really hope they figure out how to create a more compelling story for him moving forward, and I look forward to seeing it. Okay team, final part of the display, being the centerpiece featuring two chrome Mandalorians and a tank trooper with the Mando sculpt. Visually I chose to have them either side of the Mythosaur crest on the quarter scale base so we can still see that and also have it anchor the center of the whole display. Starting with Chrome Mando and Grogu, fully kitted out with all of the accessories on his back. For me, this display option is a really cool idea by Hot Toys and one I think a lot of people will recreate to showcase this moment from the show. A fun thing for me when recreating this look was playing around with how I make my version of him in this pose stand alone and be unique. So I really focused on trying to convey body position with angles, with how he's stepping, how he's leaning, how he's holding the bar and where he's looking. And I think I've landed on something I'll keep for a long while. And now lastly, the final piece of the puzzle. Two moments, two very key emotional moments from the show that I think they did to perfection. Mando when he was in the tank trooper disguise and chose to remove his helmet, doing whatever it takes to save Grogu, and then the very end of season two where he removes his helmet in front of everyone to say goodbye to his friend. Man, come on, it doesn't get any better than that. 
Now I've chosen to have the Tank Trooper Mando behind and facing away from the Chrome Mando for something different, but also because that episode with him in Mayfeld is one of my favourite episodes. That whole sequence when he takes off his helmet, the build up, the tension, wondering how he was going to get out of it. Having him posed like this and only partially being able to see him brings me back to that moment from the show. And now, the tearful goodbye. Even though they end up getting reunited in Book of Boba, this end to season 2 was perfection. It hit me in the feels, and I know it got you too. The first two seasons of The Mandalorian concluded in such a satisfying and heartfelt way that both times Din removes his helmet feels earned and worth something. The connection Din and Grogu have is special, and ultimately the core of why the first two seasons worked so well for me. The action is awesome, the sets are fantastic, and the adventure is there, but at the very core it's a relationship between a guy in a helmet and a puppet. I'm ride or die for these guys, and I'm excited to see where their story goes. And that's it guys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of On The Shelf and maybe got some inspiration for your own displays. I thank you all for tuning in and if you haven't already done so, do us a favour, hit that like button, notification bell and subscribe to the channel. Memberships are also available now so if you'd like to support the channel and get a little more access, take a look and see if you'd like to join the Iron Legion. Lastly, we got reviews and unboxings, story theme posing showcases, display tips and tricks plus live streams including The Rundown where we deep dive into film and TV. But for now guys, until next time, this is the way. Thank <laughs> you.